What's going on guys? It's starting to be that time of year. Turkey season's over. You're starting to get your blind bag out. Starting to think about duck hunting again. And you're wondering, do my calls need tuned? Do they need clean? Do I need to do anything with them at all? So we're going to go over that today. And it's a perfect time for me to do this video because this is the time of year where I'm tuning calls every day, all day, trying to get inventory built up for the fall. So that way, hopefully, I don't have to spend all day, every day this winter tuning calls. And hopefully I can do a little bit more hunting this fall. We'll see. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Real quick before we jump into this, if you're new here, make sure you check out the other videos on the channel. We got all sorts of instructional videos for duck, goose, and turkey calls from beginner all the way to advanced. So no matter where you're at in your calling adventures, we got a video that will probably help you. So let's go ahead and get into how to tune a duck call. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to pull our call apart, grab the reeds, and slide the reed and the cork right out. And you just inspect everything. Make sure nothing's broke, nothing's cracked, nothing like that. And then just take your insert to the sink, rinse it out with water. You can scrub it with a brush, use a little bit of soap, and just get it cleaned out. There's probably a layer of film on your tone board. We just want to get that off. Get it nice and clean back to new. Once you got it all cleaned out and everything, the tuning process is pretty straightforward once you understand, you know, what does what. So we're going to take our new reed and we're going to pinch it. And it's going to bend the same way each time. And that is going to be the downside. So that's going to go down against the tone board. And if you're doing a single reed, now is when we're going to put the wedge in. If you're going to do it as a double reed, you take your top reed, which is going to be shorter, and it's going to have a dimple in it. And the dimple is going to go down. That is keeping your top reed and your bottom reed separated so they don't stick together. So make sure both of your reeds are centered all the way towards the back of the cork notch. And they're sitting flush back there. And then we're going to take our new wedge. Make sure everything's nice and centered. And then I just take my scissors and push it down all the way to the bottom. You don't want any gaps at the bottom. You're going to make sure it fits nice and tight. Make sure your reeds stayed square. They should have. And then we're going to start by just trimming a little bit off of the bottom reed. And usually I can get this pretty close on the first try. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave it a little bit long. So the longer reed is going to take more air to blow, and it's going to be deeper. So that takes way too much air, and it's way too deep for me. And so this is where personal preference comes into play. So we can take a little bit more off. You don't want to take much off. A little bit at a time. You can always cut more off. You can't put it back on. Still takes a little bit too much air for me. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking like the thickness of a human hair. Just a little bit. I'll take a little bit more yet. about right where I like it. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my dog ears on there. I'm just going to do little 45s. I don't go crazy with my dog ears. I prefer a smaller dog ear. That's exactly where I like it. So if you're going to order a new reed kit, I would suggest making sure you get at least two or three extra reeds because there's a pretty good chance of you cutting it down too far and needing to start over. So do yourself a favor and make sure you get a couple extra reeds. So that's it for this video, guys. It's pretty straightforward. Clean it out with soap and water. You know, get all the grime off there. Put your new reeds in. And remember, longer reed is going to take more air and it's going to be deeper. And the shorter you make it, it's going to get easier to blow and it's going to get a little bit higher pitched. And if you cut the reed too short, you're going to know immediately because it's going to be super high pitched and squealy and you're not going to like it. So when you get to that point, pull the reed over, start over again. 
it may take you a few tries to get it exactly where you like it. And as far as taking this a step farther and doing like tone board modifications to tune the call how you like it, I would not suggest doing that unless you know what you're doing. When you get a call from me or any other call maker, the tone board should be perfect. There's no calls that leave here that aren't perfect. I tune every single one of these personally by hand. And so all the tone board modifications are made by me before they leave the shop. And that's going to be the case for all the other call makers as well. So you shouldn't be sanding on your tone board unless you really know what you're doing because that is irreversible damage. You can always change your reads out, but once you file your tone board down, you can't change that back. So unless you really know what you're doing, I would not suggest fooling with your tone board. It's already perfect. Trust me. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you. If it did, leave it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you have a great waterfowl season. It's I know it's still, you know, it's the end of May, but boy, I'm getting excited already. We got a lot of calls to tune. And things are really starting to ramp up for the 2019-2020 waterfowl season. Boy, that sounds weird. 2020. Yeah, it's coming. So anyways, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Have a great season.